All right, guys, here we go. Here we go. Um, I may need to be brought out on a stretcher after this one. I, I might bleed out through my eyeballs as we watch this. Here is George W. Bush. Um, there's this thing called Masterclass, and we've covered some of these before. I don't know if we may have covered the Bill Clinton one or the Hillary Clinton one. This goofy thing called Masterclass is like, you know, you can learn from the most elite of the elite people in the world about various issues where they're experts. It's a very, like, you know, fake, highbrow garbage thing here. And um, this one is, I shit you not, Tough Calls and Life Lessons with President George W. Bush. So he is doing a master class on leadership. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's see what we got. The chief executive has got to be bold within reason and daring in application. I recognize... What does that even mean? <laughs> bold within reason and daring with application or without application? Motherfucker, that could have been written on a fortune cookie. What does that mean? It's vague platitudes. This is he's he's bringing back the politics of you know the early two thousands here. That's what this is. Nothing concrete. Just fill the air with noise and move on and hope nobody realizes that you're a fraud. Very few people watching this will become president, but I think you'll find lessons in leadership that will apply to your life. Look at that. Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, George W. Bush, Laura Bush, and Madeleine Albright. For those of you who are listening on Spotify or whatever podcast app, which, by the way, the show is available on all the various podcast apps now, if you guys prefer listening uh, just the audio versus, uh, you know, the YouTube clips. But anyway, for people who are just listening on screen right now, it's like, you know, a cadre of war criminals. <laughs> That's what it is. It's just like, it's just, it's a mess. God, ugh. You know, I think I think I pinpointed exactly what it is I hate about these things. It sort of presupposes, it assumes that meritocracy is already true, like we already have a meritocracy, and these people who sort of made it to the top are there because they're just the most intelligent, the most genius, the most bright, the most strategic, you know? And that is just, it. you guys know, we... We live in more of an anti-meritocracy than we do a meritocracy. People fail up all the time. And people bust their ass and work hard and go all the way to the bottom, oftentimes. So that's what gets under my skin here. And you know these people think their shit doesn't stink. You know they feel that way. As president, sometimes I had information that the American people didn't know. And therefore I had to make decisions what was best for the country on knowledge that wasn't evident. That Mm, I, that's such a Weasley way of trying to cover his ass for all of his terrible decisions. I mean, look, I know it looked terrible to you guys, but you, you just didn't have access to all the information, bro. I had all the access to all the information, and so I know that I actually made all the right decisions and stuff. Oh, come on, man. Oh, this is painful. How did they release this unironically? How did they release this? That's just the nature of leadership. So long as you're guided by principle, and so long as you're guided by... A cause greater than self, you can endure criticism because it's going to come. Oh. One of the oh, it's look. I know you guys hate me, but it's only because I'm so principled. I was just so principled. I'm just I'm so high minded. I'm operating on like another frequency that you guys can't understand, bro. That's what this is. Oh God. Oh my blood pressure. Oh sweet Jesus. Oh my God. I need a substance. Somebody get me some sort of pill. I'll take a benzo. I'll take a Percocet. Anything, anybody, anything anybody's got. I got I to bring the pain down, bro. The things I missed after the presidency was this daily learning. And thankfully, painting came into my life. It's a learning experience because with every paint stroke, you learn something new. All right, I'm going to do another flower. It's important. Think of the Iraqi mothers with dead children and dead husbands. Think of them. And this motherfucker's going off about, I learn something new every day. I'm, I'm going to paint some flowers, bro. I'm going to paint some flowers, bro. You want some flowers, bro? It, they're, they're trying to be, oh, look, what a jovial, nice grandpa type dude. 
Ugh. to have a set of priorities that guide you and your team your company your managers have got to understand those priorities to me the most important priorities were my faith in my family and my friends that may sound corny to some but it, it sounds like you're lying is what it sounds like that's what it sounds like it helps you reorganize the rest of your life welcome down thanks great glad to be here when I was speaking to audiences, I didn't want them to think I was smarter than they were. Mmm, right. That's why you sounded like a total fucking moron, is because you were purposely trying to sound like a fucking moron. That's what it was. It's not that you are stupid, it's that you tried to sound stupid to relate to the voters who you think are stupid. Thank you. One of the keys to communication is to figure out how to enable the person you're talking to to relax. You know, I, had, I was a master at the Malaprop. Misunderestimate. The press corps reaction was, did the guy really just say that? <laughs> he tried, okay, so he's now trying to say, when he used the word that he made up, misunderestimated, that, oh, I was just, I was doing that on purpose, bro. It's not that I misspoke. What, look, what, what is the point of this? What is, why, what are you doing? Oh my God. Oh, and by the way, we're going to leave a banger of a comment at the end of this. All right. And I hope all you guys do the same goddamn thing. Title of the video, Tough Calls and Life Lessons. President George W. Bush, master class. I remember right after 9-11 in the Oval Office talking about praying for families that had suffered loss. I broke down in tears. If your heart is touched, let people know that your heart is touched. Not everybody is going to be a leader, but everybody can end up being a better person. The challenge of life is not to attain wealth and status and power. The challenge is to do war crimes and implement torture. The challenge of life is to improve and to learn to love better. And uh, <clears throat> everybody can do that. I'm George W. Bush. And this is Masterclass. Unbelievable. All right. Comment time. All right. What are we putting here? You are a war criminal. There are minimum hundreds of thousands of innocent people who are dead because of your illegal wars. You implemented a torture regime which violates the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. You slavishly served the rich with massive tax cuts, cuts and deregulation. You are either just as bad as Donald Trump Or maybe worse. Please have the decency to stay in your house for the rest of your life and not do a PR image rehab campaign. I don't like you. And nobody in their right mind should piss off. <laughs> All right, let's go with that. All right, there we go. Comment that. Guys, go upvote that, please, and go leave your own comments. Don't do any threats. Threats are bad. Threats are wrong. We are against violence on this channel across the board. Everybody knows that. Be a good person. But also be clear. You are a war, war criminal, sir. That's what you are. You are a very, very bad man. You did very, very bad things. So, anyway. Um, oh, one more thing I wanted to leave, uh, leave you guys with here while we're talking about George W. Bush. Just for people who, you know, maybe you're young and you don't know all the specifics of what this man is responsible for. This is an article in Business Insider. It came out in 2013. Here are just some numbers. At, at, and this is from the time, 2013. It's, been, it's worse since then, right? But, as of 2013, here's what we're dealing with with the decision that George W. Bush made. There were 189,000 direct war deaths this is in Iraq, which doesn't include the hundreds of thousands more that died due to war-related hardships. 
There were 4,488 U.S. service personnel who were killed directly. There are 32,223 troops that are injured, and that's not including PTSD. There are 134,000 civilians who were killed directly. There are 655,000 persons who have died in Iraq since the invasion that would not have died if the invasion had not occurred. There are 150 reporters killed. There were 2.8 million persons who remain either internally displaced or have fled the country. $1.7 trillion is the amount in war expenses spent by the U.S. Treasury Department through fiscal year 2013. $5,000 was spent per second in the war in Iraq. $5,000 per second. $350,000 was the cost to deploy one American military member. $490 billion is the amount in war benefits that's owed to war veterans. $7 trillion is the projected interest payments due by 2053, because of course the war was paid for with borrowed money. $20 billion is the amount paid to KBR. That's a defense contractor, and they are responsible for equipment and services in Iraq. $20 billion was paid to them. I'm sure uh, there were a bunch of yachts that were bought with that money and mansions. $3 billion is the amount of KBR payments Pentagon auditors considered, quote, questionable. Huh, where'd that $3 billion go? Gosh. I'm sure there's a very legitimate reason that, that they can't find it. $60 billion is the amount paid for reconstruction of Iraq, which was ruled largely a waste due to corruption and shoddy work. That's lovely. $4 billion is the amount owed to the U.S. by Iraq before the invasion. $1.6 million is the gallons of oil used by U.S. forces each day in Iraq. $12 billion is the cost per month of the war by 2008. $7 billion is the amount owed to Iraq by the U.S., after the war, mostly due to fraud, $20 billion was the annual air conditioning cost in Iraq. And then gone missing, $546 million in spare parts, 190,000 guns, including 110,000 AK-47s. 40% is the increase in Iraqi oil production after our invasion. Huh, weird. I wonder if that had something to do with what, why we went in there. $5 billion is the revenue from Iraqi oil in 2003. That went all the way up to $85 billion in 2011. $150 billion is the amount oil companies are expected to invest in oil development over the next decade. $75 billion is the approximate amount expected to go to American subcontracting companies, largest of all, Halliburton, who Dick Cheney worked for, and then, by the way, on his way out, he took an exit bonus of millions and millions of dollars. Ha! Huh. Really strange, bro! Really strange stuff there. Um, and the most important number of all, zero, donut, nada, zilch. That's the number of nuclear weapons of mass destruction found. There were some chemical weapons that were found, but by the way, why did Saddam Hussein have the chemical weapons? We gave them to him. So that's George W. Bush. Now you know. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.